It's been over a year since the devastating earthquake in Haiti. Craig Kielberger, who founded Free the Children at age 12 with some friends from school, and Michel Jean, UNESCO Special Envoy for Haiti and former Governor General of Canada, addressed the audience of the Vancouver Board of Trade on April 15th about the state of Haiti and the importance of education in rebuilding the country. There has been little freedom for anyone since the earthquake, much less children. Freedom is what brought so many people together on that Friday in April. The beautiful words written into the Haitian constitution is, is letter to die than to live without freedom and in chains. We must always live free. It's an extraordinary call to action that the slaves of the first freed republic put out with education as the cornerstone. Pain. What we know of pain is a scraped knee or a broken bone. In the worst case, a family member lost. People in Haiti watched homes, people, and possessions get destroyed. And one year later, people are still homeless, living in worse conditions, and watching family and friends die from diseases like cholera. It was uh, last month, some of you may have noticed in the news, the, the British medical journal The Lancet published a new estimate on the infection rates of cholera in Haiti. And they estimated that between um, April 1st, when they published it, to November 30th, that an estimated seven, 770 odd thousand individuals would become infected with cholera in that time frame. And out of those individuals, 11,000 will lose their lives. One year after the Haiti devastation, Michelle and Craig still have Haiti on their radars. I want also to thank the Board of Trade. I want to do that from the bottom of my heart for the invitation to take part in this very special luncheon to highlight efforts to establish a universal, quality, and accessible public education system in Haiti. That's what we need. Not doctors and medical supply shipments or extraordinary amounts external. That's important in the short term after natural disasters, but we have to build the local capacity of local individuals, of Haitians themselves, to rebuild their country. Because again, long after that, the, the newspaper articles fade and we already see, and it's tragic, we already see non-governmental organizations in Haiti starting to pack up and leave. During a moving speech by Craig, he announced that the Nobel Peace Prize winner, Mikhail Gorbachev, will be a keynote speaker at the upcoming Weed Day on Thursday, October 13th. Weed Day is a massive worldwide event held in four Canadian cities, including Vancouver. Students will fill Rogers Arena and millions will stream it live or watch it on TV. What is most amazing about Weed Day is that it is an event to celebrate what young people here locally have done. Um, you cannot again buy your way in, you have to earn it. The students who this very week are taking what we call five days for freedom, students across the city who are involved in this, as you stand before tanks and stand in front of guns and armies in North Africa and the Middle East, this is our own way for young people to stand for freedom. But how they stand here is a day every day for a week, an awareness raiser or a fundraiser supporting freedom around the world, whether that be freedom from bullying here at home or freedom from violence of gangs, or globally freedom from thirst, and freedom from disease, and freedom from exploitation. Craig mentioned many keynote speakers that have presented at past We Day events, many of which are Nobel Peace Prize winners. One speaker that stood out in my mind was Reverend Jesse Jackson. When he took to the stage in an extraordinary history he provided in one man's lifetime of going from being next to Dr. King when he was shot to being next to Barack Obama when he was inaugurated as President of the United States. In one man's lifetime, the change that can take place in a nation. And he shared that story with young people, how change is possible, how the greatest of changes, social movements of our time, are possible. Free the Children is more than just We Day. It's children helping children through education. There were many wonderful people at the Vancouver Board of Trade Luncheon. It was amazing to see how many were teens. Two of these teens were the co-MCs. I had the pleasure of talking to them after the event. What advice would you guys give young youth today if they want to get more involved? Well, you're always going to encounter a few obstacles when you're trying to get your peers involved. I remember as soon as I got back from Kenya, I wanted to get my class involved, even my school, when I was in grade 8. And um, just right off the start, just because I was doing things differently, you do encounter um, just some comments and you know it's you just have to stay really strong and overcome that because once you start doing things you know your friends realize exactly what it is that you're trying to accomplish and they see the importance. And I would say the big thing is just to 
keep doing it. It doesn't matter. You'll, you'll make a new circle of friends and you'll integrate your old friends with your new friends through what you're, through what you're doing and you'll encourage your old friends to get involved as well. And at first it'll be hard and you'll have some interesting obstacles like Matt said, but it, at the end of the day it all works out. The event was definitely a learning experience for me. I left the luncheon with the knowledge that I can make a difference. I suggest that everyone tries just a little harder to make a change in the world. Read Craig's book, The World Needs Your Kid, donate at school fundraisers, and help out wherever you can. Everyone has something to contribute. Be one of the many people making a long-term commitment and help to free the children everywhere. This has been Kaiser Crota with Hulu Save the World. And remember, be happy!